What up though, Meerkat? It's been a while, hasn't it? So I have a couple of projects on my channel that are in the works that are just gonna take a little bit more time to get hot and ready. And as much as I would like to say that I've been working hard at cracking those, honestly, I've just been playing a lot of Vita games. I'm also playing stuff like Ghostwire Tokyo, but that's for another video. I don't know, it just seems like there are an abundance of games on this platform that are just a time sink when you think about it. But that's what we're talking about. We're talking about some of the games that I've been playing on my Vita over the past, what, two? three weeks. The games that have been eating up a lot of my time. The games that I've been thoroughly enjoying. And we're going to start with the one that's been taking up the most of my time, which is Stardew Valley. I honestly cannot think of a single game that might be more perfect for this platform than Stardew Valley. Not only is it lightweight due to its 2D sprite artwork, but it's also one of those games that you really want to take with you when you leave the house. For those of you who don't know, maybe, I don't know how you don't know at this point. Stardew Valley is a role playing game. It's a simulation game. In fact, it's a farm simulation game. In fact, it has a lot in common with Harvest Moon or Story of Seasons, depending on whether you support Natsume or not. When I tell you that I have a budding addiction to this game, it's serious. I think I can feel myself becoming more and more and more addicted to this game. And to be honest, I don't think I want to stop. There's a certain charm to the overall gameplay loop of Stardew Valley. I plant my seeds. I water my seeds. I leave for the day to do some activities such as foraging or meeting new people in the town, maybe buying supplies for my farm. I go to sleep. I wake up the next day. I water the sapling or whatever. I leave, do some activities. Maybe I go fishing. Maybe I take on a quest. I come home. I go to sleep. I wake up. I water my plants. It's it's a loop. It's an addictive loop as well. So yeah, I've been playing a lot of Stardew Valley recently. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I highly recommend you do because I do have a couple of essays that should be coming out relatively soon. Here's a preview. Got you. And if you want the context, then you should definitely sub to the channel. But another game that's been eating up a lot of my time is Salt and Sanctuary. Salt and Sanctuary is another RPG. It's an action role playing game and as averse to saying this as I am, it really does have a lot of DNA from, from software games, specifically Dark Souls 1 I would say and Bloodborne. In fact, I'm actually playing as a hunter due to my affinity for Bloodborne. You pick a class and then each class has a skill tree that you can build out. Instead of bonfires, you have sanctuaries. You fight enemies and they drop salt instead of blood echoes or souls. And the thing that I appreciate the most is that they keep salt and gold separate. That's the one thing I can't stand about Bloodborne is that you have to use your blood echoes to buy upgrades. Thank God Salt and Sanctuary doesn't do that because I would be supremely annoyed at getting killed that many times if I knew that losing my salt meant not only not being able to level up, but also losing my ability to upgrade weapons or buy new materials. I don't know what else there is to say about this game. It really, to me, just feels like a 2D Bloodborne. And I'm very much a fan of that. And the fact that I can take it with me when I go upstairs, maybe cooking, maybe I wanna take a walk to the store and I'm just playing my Vita while I'm on the sidewalk or something like that. Maybe I'm on a bus, maybe I'm in the back of a car. I'm enjoying myself all the same. That's the great thing about Portable. Also, I just found out that there's gonna be a sequel to Salt and Sanctuary called Salt and Sacrifice, which is dropping just a couple of months away from the time of this recording. So I'm very excited for that. Unfortunately, it's not gonna be on the Vita. So I am a little bit salty about that. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! The third and <laughs> Third game that's been eating up just a shitload of my time is a game that I featured in my previous video talking about Vita Essentials. That is Risk of Rain. Risk of Rain is a roguelike. It's super fun. It's super addictive. You literally get into this mode, or at least I do, where you go through a run and you start getting really, really powerful, really juiced up, just like fucking jacked and then you die to a boss due to a mistake that you make or a stray hit and you start thinking i could have done better and now you are on a quest to get just as amped up as you were before in your last run just to make sure that you can beat the enemy or the boss that killed you that psychological manipulation that that gameplay loop that that fix that you get that high 
of actually overcoming the challenge that took you down in the last run. That is super gratifying and I love it so much. I loved Risk of Rain 1 so much that I actually bought Risk of Rain 2 when it came out on PC. That's how much I love, love, love playing Risk of Rain. Now, here's the thing about Risk of Rain 2. It's not on the Vita. And there's something charming about the sprite-based graphics on Risk of Rain 1. And there's something about the fact that it was developed by a fucking duo of college students that makes me, just makes me super happy. Risk of Rain, super great game, super fun roguelike. I definitely recommend it. The fourth and final game has taken up significantly less of my time, but I've still been putting in some time because I fucking love dungeon crawlers and this is probably one of the most unique dungeon crawlers that I've ever played. It's not Persona. This game is actually called Oreshika Tainted Bloodlines and it's a sequel to a game that came out in 99 and honestly that fact is irrelevant because this game has nothing to do with that one. And the thing that's interesting about this game is the hook. You see, you create a character who belongs to a bloodline that has been cursed by a demon. The demon has cursed you and your family members to only be able to live for two years. That's a rude gesture in some countries, I'm sorry. I'm... The demon has cursed you to only be able to live for two years and you cannot mate with anyone other than a god or a goddess. If you wanna make strong babies, you gotta mate with a strong god. And if you want to mate with a strong god, you got to go dungeon crawling. The gameplay loop is very interesting to me. You basically go into a dungeon, you and your two sisters, in my case. You go into a dungeon, you fight Oni, you go deeper and deeper and deeper into the dungeon. You complete missions while you're there and you decide whether or not you want to stay there for just a month. Or maybe you want to stay in there for several months and kind of tough it out. The stronger that you get in the dungeons, the more you fight and the more you level up, the more likely you are to be able to pick a high level god or goddess to mate with. You make a baby, and then when that baby reaches maturity a month later, because games are weird, ah, shit, that child will become a party member when the character you created inevitably dies. It creates this kind of depersonalization that I find very fascinating for this type of game. A lot of games, they don't go for that kind of thing, especially role playing games where most of them rely on you getting attached to the characters in order to continue playing the game. But in Oreshika, the gameplay is key. So if you don't find the gameplay fun, and fortunately for me, I do, then you're not gonna get a lot out of this. But if you do enjoy the good old dungeon crawling video game, then definitely give this one a try because it's very interesting, very interesting. And that's pretty much it. This wasn't, I mean, I'm not out to make a super high quality in-depth review of Vita video games. I kind of want to, but honestly, as long as I don't have a capture card for Vita, then it's probably going to be a while until I'm able to do something like that. So I really just wanted to get up here and talk about what I've been enjoying. You know, that's pretty much what I've been doing these last few months is just talking to people, talking to you about what I've been enjoying and trying to share some of that love and hopefully get out some information to people who are maybe looking for something to fall in love with themselves. Leave a like on this video if you did enjoy it and Vita owners in the comments, let me know what have you been enjoying on your PlayStation Vita as of late and what is your favorite Vita game of all time? All links is down below. I have two video essays to record, edit, and publish, so I'm out.